gosh, I did forget part of it, didn't I? Hmm. I brought Graham in here because we want to talk to you about the results, okay? Sure. So, um, it is completely clear that you were not honest during the testing, and I think you already know that. Um, you did not pass the polygraph test. Okay. Right? Okay. So now we need to talk about what actually happened. And I feel like you're probably ready to do that. I didn't, I didn't lie to you on that polygraph, I promise. Chris, I, I'm, I'm, I'm no. not stop. I just um, stop for a minute. Take a deep breath. I, I want you to take a deep breath right now. There's a reason you feel sick to your stomach. And when people hold stuff inside, it makes you physically ill. And I can just tell on your face, I could tell you tell from the second you walked in that you were wanting to just come clean and just be done with this. And I appreciate that because you knew sitting down in that chair that you weren't going to pass today and you knew I was going to find out because I told you that and then you continued to stay knowing that you could at the end say, you know what, I just need to get this off my chest. Like I just need to tell you what happened. We're not, we're not here to play games, we're not here to do any of that with you, we just want to know what happened. So can you start from the beginning and tell us what happened? Everything that I've to, I have told you, I did, I did not lie on this polygraph. I am. I don't know how much I could I could tell you right now. Like I did not. Yeah, it's, it's not even know. it's not even an option right now because uh -huh. you did not pass the polygraph. Uh -huh. So I know you were being deceptive. So that's not even an issue, an issue right now. The issue right now is what happened to Shanann, Bella, and Celeste. That's the issue right now. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about that. I've I know. I know you want to tell us. I, I can. I can see it in your face. Holding this lie in is going to do nothing for you. I, I know this. Like okay. I'm not like trying to like cover things up. Like yeah, but you kind of are because in in no, it's normal. Normal people would do that. Normal people that make a mistake initially are going to go. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't do anything. That's normal. I would expect that. It's just like if you ask your kid, you know, did you write on the wall? And they go, no. And you're like, I, you have a marker on your hand. Like, I know you just wrote on the wall. And they're like, oh, okay. That's a natural reaction that someone's going to initially lie about something like that and then eventually tell the truth. So this is your eventually telling the truth time. This is where, this is where the rubber meets the road, Chris. Like, don't let this continue any longer, please. Uh, I'm not trying to make anything continue. Like, I want them back home, like... But you know they're not coming back home. You know I, that. I don't know in the back of my head. I'm, I hope they come back home. But you know they're not. I, I hope they come back home. Mm -hmm. And I don't know they're not coming back home. Chris, Timmy and I are confused. Okay. And here's what we're confused about. I told you that we've done some work overnight. Yeah, I told you that we've got a lot of leads. Okay, that wasn't a lie. Uh -huh. We know a lot more than you think we do. Okay, and here's where we're confused. You're this great guy. I'm not just telling you that. Okay, I'm telling you that because everyone tells us that. Okay, we can't find anyone to say anything bad about you. Chris is a great guy. He's a good father. He's a good man. We're confused as to why you're not taking care of your beautiful children. I'm not taking care of them right now. Right now. Where are they? I don't know where they're at. I honestly, I do not know where they are at. If I could have my babies back home right now, I would. I want them back. I want everybody back. That is the God's honest truth.
we just can't figure out why there's two Chris's. Okay. We talked about that last night. Yes. We just can't figure it out. There's a Chris. Okay. If somebody asked me, my kids' child or teen, I would say, I don't know, go ask them all. That's the truth, right? And so it is very surprising to me, and it warms my heart that you're the type of dad who can pack a bag in the morning and you know just what to put in there, and you know just what to put in there as a backup in case they have an accident. Okay? You know what the clothes to put in there, you know what they have for breakfast, you know what they have for a snack and a dinner and a nighttime snack. You can tell me the book you read to your daughters. Okay? I know you love them. And you're not faking that, are you? That's real. Okay? There's a lot of guys who come in here and try to tell me that, and I know they're lying. Okay? Because they can't answer those questions that you can answer. Okay? But you are here today lying about something else. So we need to talk about that, okay? About you, daughter. I know. And this is very good. Keep I, 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 I'm not proud of it. I, I don't think anything like that could happen. I don't think I would ever do it, but I did. I know. Keep going. And she accused me of it. I denied it. I, I, I she was on her, and I feel horrible for it. Like she was pregnant, and it was. I don't want. To, I didn't hurt her. I cheated on her. I hurt her emotionally. I cheated on her, and I feel absolutely horrible about this. But that's what I've been holding. I think. That. When I, w I didn't go to the Rocky again, I was with her. Okay. I went to dinner with her. Okay. Keep going. That five weeks I was alone, I was with her most, most of the time. Okay. You're doing a good job. This is the Chris that I knew would come out today. This is the Chris who tells the truth because you're a truth teller. When I tell you I fell out of love, it's because I fell in love with her. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, that's the God's honest truth. Okay. Who is her? So I, I don't want to get her involved in this. I don't want to ruin her life. Like, it's some, something like this. I don't want her involved in this. Okay. So can we talk about that a little bit? Yes. I knew that you would say you didn't want to get her involved. She's a wonderful person. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, she knew I was married, yes. And I told her we were going through issues, yes. yes. And I told her that, you know, we were going to get, you know, at the end, like, we were going to get separated. Like, once I figured out what that was, I didn't know what that was going to be. I know. I had no idea. I, I, like, you know, I saw her, took my breath away, and I'd never thought in a million years that could happen. I know. I know you think I'm a figure, but, um, like, but like, it was, I never felt that way about anybody, like, anybody in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. Chris, that's not your fault. No, I'm, I'm, I, I'm no, 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 I'm just, well, I'm, can we do this? Um, I know you want to take care of her, because me, it's because you're a type of guy that takes care of women. It is. You took care of your wife, you took care of your daughters, you were very good at taking care, of her, and you want to take care of her. So can we make a deal? I don't think this girl did anything to hurt anybody. But I can't walk out of here wondering. So can we leave her out of it? Okay. And get back to your wife and your daughters. Okay. Where are they? That I do not know. That was what I was holding back. Like I didn't know Chris, like what I did. Chris, I know, Chris, in the interview today, you weren't asked about infidelity. You were asked about that was I was holding back from last night. That's when not you why you failed today. That's not how that works. You would have reactions to every single question, not just the ones that we talked about being important. Like the ones you wanted me to lie about. Uh, like is that what you're talking about? No, the ones about her disappearance mm -hmm. and knowing where she's at and about what you about seeing her last. I was not lying about those things. Can I, can I tell you what I think? Yes. Okay. So, going into that interview today with Tammy, where we strapped you in, we knew 
We knew all about Nikki. Okay? All about her. And you're doing a very good job right now because you didn't have to tell us about her, but you did. Uh, I couldn't hold that in anymore. I know. I, okay. We could see it in your chest and in your eyes. Okay? Here's the challenge that we have. We knew about Nikki, and so we didn't need to ask you about her in the polygraph. We just didn't need to, because we knew. Okay? And so that's why we didn't ask you, because we already knew the answer. Okay? We're very, very worried about your daughters and your wife. I am too. Okay? So can I tell you, maybe um, based on the people that I've talked to, and Tammy's talked to, based on all the investigations that we've done, based on your cell phone, both your cell phones, your wife's cell phone, Nikki's cell phone, okay? Based on talking with family members and friends and based on talking with everyone. Here's what we know, okay? And I'm not gonna lie to you right now, here's what we know, okay? Chris is a good man. Everyone said it. Okay, I'm not just telling you that because I, you know, want to blow smoke here. You're a good man, okay? Nobody can fake answers about packing a backpack, nobody. You either pack a backpack for your kids or you don't, okay? This should have been the happiest time of your marriage. Okay? You and Shanann. This should have been the happiest time. She's making a little money. She's making good money. You're making great money. You both have a job. You have beautiful kids. You have a beautiful house. You're in Colorado. Clean air. Good people. Okay? And on top of that, you look pretty good now. You're pretty fit. Okay? This should have been the time in your marriage where you guys were happy and thriving and productive. Okay? And I believe that Shanann's the reason none of that happened. I believe that she's a controlling person. Maybe doesn't listen to you as much as she should. I think that she can do whatever she wants and you can't. Okay? I think if you were to go to a restaurant, she would order whatever the hell she wants. And as soon as you order a nice steak, she says, whoa, buddy. Okay? A woman that lets her man do all of the backpack packing and all of the cooking. I do all the cooking, but yeah. she cooks like I yeah. do like some things here and there. Okay. That's because you're a good person, and I think that she started on the path to leave the marriage. Okay. It's ironic that we're talking about you and Nikki. I think that she was the one who started on that path first. What do you think about that? I wouldn't have thought about that. Okay. And the other thing I think is interesting is, even though she is that type of person that's controlling, doesn't listen, does what she wants, is walking away from her kids, here you are defending her. Because to your core, you want to take care of the people you love. Okay. And that's the reason why we want to give you an opportunity today to just help us find them, okay? Will you do that for us? I'll do whatever I can to help to find them where they're at. Okay. So when she asked you, do you know where they are, or are you going to tell the truth about where they are, you failed miserably. Okay. Why? I'm, I'm a nervous person. Like, every question I ask, every question, it felt like I, did, I wouldn't even say the right thing. That's not how the polygraph works. I don't I'm like I don't know like what it reads like through, I know what she was saying about the aut autonomy of of the process but like I don't know where they're at. Chris, right now your dad's outside. He flew across the country to help. Okay. You're lying to him. to everyone you talk to. And they all bought it. Will you please help us find your babies? I want to find them. I've told you over and over, I want to find everyone. Can we go back to that night? Yeah. You know that we have texts. And we know and that there's an Alexa in your house. Mm -hmm. And you know that those are trained to record distress. Okay. You know that we know the content of Nikki's text messages and your text messages and Shanann's text messages.
Okay. I didn't know you knew where Nikki was until tonight, right now, so. Okay. Tell us about that night again, and please tell the truth this time. I, I told you the truth. I, um, I promise I've told you the truth. Like, we woke up at 4 o'clock. I woke up at 4 o'clock. Got dressed, got ready. 4.15, me and Shannon talk about the house, about separation. Did you guys talk about Nikki? She, she accused me of like, all right, but well, you know, is there somebody else? Sure. I didn't say. He denied it? Yeah. Okay. Because she brought up like, you know, like, why well, was there a six day dollar charge at the um, end of the other night? Okay. Was there two of you? And that was with two of you, wasn't it? Yes. Okay. That's me. Okay. So it sounds like at that time there was maybe you weren't quite ready to just say, say I this, this I everything. I couldn't, I couldn't say it. Okay. We were already trying hard enough. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't say that. Okay. What did you say? I just told her, like, I want this separation has to go. I want separation. Okay. Was there her idea to sell the house of yours? She initiated the realtor the week before in an email. Why? Because we were talking about we, the marital issues. She's like, well, you can't live, afford to live on her own. Well, she can't afford to live on her own. I can't afford to live on her own. So she's like, we need a contact man. Okay. See. And who'd you contact? Well, she contacted Ann, our realtor. Ann? Yeah. Okay. Would Ann say the same thing that your wife con initiated the contact? Yeah. Okay. She would. And then on Monday, I was I texted her to see if she could, what she could do. Okay. And that's in there too. You probably knew that. Tell me about the pregnancy. Is that your idea or hers? She said it was about, she was about 80 20. Well, I was about, I wanted the pros and cons of it. Like, after she got after she got pregnant, she told everybody that it was mainly my idea. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, it was, I, I wanted a boy. Did you want to get pregnant? Mm hmm. Okay. And then after the fact, she said it was mainly me that wanted, and she was about, you know, she was like 70 30 against it at that point. Like, she would tell her friends that. Yeah. And I was just like, what? 70 30 against it? Like, why? Mm -hmm. Can you understand that some of this just doesn't make sense to us? Okay. How is it possible that a woman and two kids are just completely gone off the face of the earth? I promise you, I have, I have nothing on my hands that's, I did nothing to those kids or her to make them vanish. So tell me what happened then. I believe you that, that you did nothing on your hands. What happened? When I left, I mean, it's on video that I left and no, I was in my truck. I didn't like load anything into my truck besides my tools, my container, my book bag, my water jug, my lunchbox. Okay, but then what happened? I drove out of the driveway. No, before you drove out of the driveway. What happened with your wife and your kids? I didn't do anything like that. They were still in the house. Where are they? Where did they go? I don't know, sir. I really don't know. Your wife's not the type of person to vanish. I know she's not. She had 10 things on her schedule that meant she was going to be there the next day, that day, the yeah. day after that, with friends, with a doctor. Okay? She didn't leave because she wanted to. Okay. So what happened? I didn't do anything to her or the kids. Was it an accident? I didn't do anything. Was it an accident? There was no accident. I don't know if there was an accident in the house. I wasn't there for it. It's a big deal if it's an accident because we can work with that, Chris. No. And I there's think no that's maybe what happened. There's no. I did not cause an accident. I didn't do anything to my wife and kids. Was it a misunderstanding? There's no misunderstanding. Like we had a talk. There was a misunderstanding where I I didn't tell her about the affair. Okay. I didn't. That, right. that was the misunderstanding. Like sure. miscommunication, yeah, misunderstanding. Yeah, good. But I probably should have told her right then, honestly. I mean, everything was out on the table anyways. Right. I should have just told her right then. But I didn't because I 
I just couldn't bring myself to do it. What was your plan? What were you going to do? I mean, how was the separation going to work? Like, once we got separated, and I would get my own place, and then we, I mean, 50 50 split with the kids, that's what I was hoping. Mm -hmm. and what about Nikki? Take it slow and just see if, it, you know, if anything develops, like, um, you know, have my own place. I just, I just find it hard to hear you talk about just having this emotional, you know, conversation with Shanann and you're bawling and crying together and you have not shed one tear in two days that you've been here. No, not one. And I, help me understand that because I don't get it. You're, these are your baby girls. Well, and you have not shed one tear over them not being around. Chris, I, uh, I, 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 I lose my four-year-old uh, in the store for 10 seconds and I start to go panic. Panic. I have not seen any of that from you. At all. Help me understand that. I love those girls. I, I would never do any of this because I haven't shed a tear. You get yeah, no, that's weird. I, Is I, that I, weird? I, don't, don't look into that like I don't love my well, kids. Tell me, my explain wife. to me. You're, you're crying with your wife that you're leaving her. Yeah. But you don't cry that your two little baby girls. I'm hoping they're still around some. I'm hoping they're still somewhere. Yeah, but you alive. don't have them right now. You're not reading stories to them at night. I know. You're not giving them midnight snacks. You're not giving them their medicine. You're not waking up with them in the morning. I know this. Like I. So that I, should cause you pain. It does cause me pain. But I don't see that. I, I don't see that. I want to see I, the Chris that cares. I want to see I, the Chris that you know, feels bad about what he did and wants to, you know, get this off his chest and be done with this and let us find your little girls so that they're not out there in the middle of a field or whatever somewhere. Like, don't do that. I, I love those girls to death. Then show us that. Show us that. Show us this Chris, I'm not this Chris. I'm not, I'm not showing you that Chris. I'm, I'm showing you the Chris that cares about his girls and his wife. Just because I haven't shed a tear, it shouldn't make you feel like I haven't, that the love isn't there for them. It's weird. It doesn't I'm, make I'm, sense I'm, to I understand you. that. You, you have to... I, 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 I totally see where you're coming from. Trust me, like, there's nothing... I, just because Chris, I... Chris, people can be pushed to the point where they do something that they regret. It happens I'm, every single day. I know. But so part of what makes you a man is the guy that goes really fucked up but this is what I did and I'm going to pay for what I did and I'm going to tell you what I did and I'm going to be honest about it Chris we can keep talking to you once we find these girls okay so once we find these girls and your wife right no matter how we find them no matter what condition they're in we can keep talking to you and you can tell us guys it's not as bad as it looks and you can say let me tell you what happened? I was never comfortable with you, Graham, or with you, Tam. No, I wasn't comfortable yet. But now that everything's known, now that the girls are found and Shanann's found, however they're found, it's okay. We can keep talking to you. Okay. Chris, did Shanann do something to them? No, I don't know. I'm serious. I, I have no clue. No, you would have known because they didn't leave the house. Like, when, did Shanann do something to them, and then did you feel like you had to do something to Shanann? <laughs> The, the, they were at the house when I left. They were there. They weren't there. They didn't leave. They vanished. They were the there. only way they could have left is in your truck. There's no way, because like, I didn't just throw them in, in my truck. But they, you know your truck has GPS, Yes. right? Yes. Because you told your boss, like, yes. hey, I'm going to separation, I'm maybe staying yes. at a friend's house, whatever. You know that thing pings every 10 seconds? Yep. So we will know you exactly turn it off. I know. where you went. And your company's giving that to us. I know. Okay. Are we not asking the right questions, Chris? No, you're, not. you're asking all the, Chris, all the questions. What are we not asking you right? What, what are we doing wrong? We're not doing anything wrong. Did 
she may do something. And she did anything to these kids. We both loved them with all our hearts. There was no way. It could have been an accident. Something happened in the house that you know about. You failed the polygraph test, Chris. This is not about, did you leave and your wife vanished and you didn't know anything about it. That was not what you were asked, okay? Okay. We know that something happened to all three of them. But I want to know, did something happen to these baby girls first that you had to take into your own hands and deal with? You had to clean it up for Shanann. Chris, you got to tell us. There's something that happened to these baby girls. Look at them. I know. Before I came in, I was watching videos. We have no doubt you love these girls with all of your heart. I have no doubt. But we make mistakes. And that's okay. It's what we do with those mistakes that make us who we are. Chris, it seems like you're thinking about it right now. What are you thinking about? Just could have. I feel like you cleaned up for her. I feel like that's the type of guy that you are. Which one of these has the breathing thing? Well, they both have inhalers, but she, she has the EOE. Encephalitis lepidus. Did she have problems breathing? Mm, probably like well, with her allergies and whatnot, like if she had anything nice. But she's had two someone with endoscopies and everything in the surgeries I told you about. Do you think she had trouble breathing that night? And she had freaked out? and didn't want to live without her baby girl? I think so. Did you hear about the homicide that happened in Aurora where the guy beat that family to death with a ball pin hammer? Mm -hmm. The only person that survived was a three-year-old sibling. And that sibling grew up to be a total mess. No family, no mom and dad. The brother or sister to serve by herself. She says, I wish I would have died with them. And there are times that people freak out. I've seen it. I mean, I've been in law for some, for almost 20 years. I've seen it. Parents freak out and they're like, oh my God, like, I can't have my baby girls live without each other. They're best friends like twins they're you know they wake each other up in the morning and I understand um, that we had a mom in Castle Rock that suffocated both her baby girls she's like I just my husband was going to take them and she's like I just couldn't just couldn't handle. I thought I was doing right by them I thought I was saving them pain. And I get it. Why? Why was she saving them pain? Because she didn't want them to have to live without their mom. Chris, this is a weight that's going to be on you for the rest of your life until we resolve it tonight. Unless we can talk about this more tonight, this is going to follow you forever. I promise you, when you start talking to us, you will feel better. I know you already feel better about getting the Nikki off your chest. She's not, she's not like, involved her in the news or anything like that. She can't do that. you got to help me. I know. Chris, we're giving you a lifeline right now. You need to take it. You need to reach out and take it. Did they look like this tonight, the last night you were with them? She had that dress on, like... On the eighth or ninth, it wasn't this. But she had that dress on. Cause I remember I had uh, two buttons on the back. I take them off so I get her pajamas on that night. 
Did you guys make sure they were warm when they left the house? Make sure they were warm. They're they're always warm. They're they always have when they're in their beds. They're always warm. Okay. Were you guys taking care of them at the very end? They're always they're they're always taken care of. They're always they never miss a meal.
So I guess I'm just worried that if we bring your dad in here, that could distract you. What do you think? Distract me from like talking to you? Yeah. I, I just I just need to talk to him. Okay. All right. I know you'll do the right thing. I do. I don't know how long it's going to take. Um, I think that you need to think a little bit more about that. Okay. And you need to realize that your dad is not going to stop loving you no matter what you tell him. You are his child. And he will not stop loving you. Never. Ever. And this is not the last chapter in anyone's story. At all. Okay. He's been here the whole time. You know, he, he didn't want to leave you. Have you ever seen, uh, sometimes when an animal's owner dies, they stick around forever? I think mean, that's your dad. Poor guy didn't want to leave today, okay? So, keep that in mind. He wants to hear it all.
Chris, we're going to let you have uh, however much time you need, okay? Okay. Can you leave us in there? No. Uh, yeah. Yes. I 
and uh, nothing else to do. They didn't know what to do.
just profusely denying it. with you, okay? Will you tell us what you told your dad? After that conversation. After that conversation we had, and she accused me of the affair, and I she, in her heart she knew what was going on. Mm -hmm. And she knew about the dinner the other night. It was too much for just me. She knew about what now? I told her I went to a Rocky game. Oh. I went out to bed. Mm -hmm. I went downstairs. And that's when you told her about the separation? Well, I, I, that was when I was upstairs in bed. Uh -huh. and told her, you know. What I wanted in the come on the separation. And that's what I want. monitor. Those covers were like pulled off and she was just laying there. She's just hot. So I go over to CC. She was in there with her. On top of her. Thank you. 